We're in uh, part two of Change in His Image, uh, chapter eight, Searching for Wisdom. And if you find your place in Proverbs chapter four this morning, I'd like to read a couple of verses, have a word of prayer and get into the lesson. Proverbs chapter four, if you would please, reading in verse five tells us, get wisdom, get understanding, forget it not, neither decline from the words of my mouth. Forsake her not, and she shall preserve thee. Love her, and she shall keep thee. Wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom, and with all thy getting, get understanding. Father, thank you for your word. Lord, there's probably not a one of us here this morning that, uh, that doesn't need a good dose of your wisdom. May you bless the lesson. May you bless the, your word as you've promised us to. Help us to be good students and good listeners. May you bless not only this class, the others, the, those that are teaching, that are laboring in the word this morning, may you bless the effort. May you help us to appreciate, Lord, what we have in thee. Thank you that indeed you're our, our, our source of wisdom. If not, you should be. Lord, if there's an area in our life that's, that's lacking, may you help us, Father, uh, with your knowledge and understanding and wisdom in that area. Thank you, Lord, for the privilege of being here this morning. Help us to focus. Help us, Lord, to, uh, to personally ask you to uh, uh, make it personal this morning to each of us the lesson, and not just to be hearers, but, Lord, to be doers. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Verse 7, again, wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom with all thy getting. Get understanding. If you were to ask yourself a question, well, what is wisdom as, as defined? Just think for yourself, if somebody were to ask you, well, what is wisdom? I've got a couple of definitions down here. One in particular is this, the ability, listen carefully, to discern or judge what is true, right, or lasting. Wisdom, the ability to discern or judge what is true, right, or lasting. Well, then you have to ask yourself the question, well, then what is knowledge? If that's wisdom, what is knowledge? Information gained, listen carefully, through experience, reasoning, or acquaintance. Information gained through experience, reasoning, or acquaintance. Can a person be knowledgeable without being wise? Ask yourself, can you be knowledgeable without being wise? Yeah, yeah. Uh, example here, I can know, no, having been a previous cigarette smoker, this is probably a, I can know if the cigarette smoking is not healthy. That's knowledge, isn't it? Amen. Now wisdom says, so don't. Uh, amen? amen. We, can, we can know things but not be wise. Uh, I can know that driving on glare ice, where I grew up in Minnesota and sometimes here in Texas we get it, is dangerous. I know that from personal experience. And choose to do so anyways, which is unwise. So can we be knowledgeable without being wise? Absolutely. Uh, knowledge is what is gathered over time through study of the scripture, Christians. True wisdom is evidenced by the ability to apply biblical knowledge to everyday life. Knowledge understands the light is turned red. Listen carefully, wisdom applies the brakes. Amen? Knowledge understands the traffic light has turned red, I'd better stop. Wisdom applies to brakes. Now, if you're in Austin, you hit the gas. Amen? Yeah. Right? Knowledge sees and understands the danger of high water or low water crossing. And we have a lot of that problem around Austin and the hill country here. How many times you hear about the search and rescue teams out there getting people out of their cars? Amen? It's thought they would drive through the low water crossing with high water. Knowledge understands the danger of this. Wisdom chooses not to attempt to drive through it. Knowledge memorizes the Ten Commandments. Wisdom seeks to obey them. Knowledge learns of God's communicable attributes, such as love, joy, and peace, which we've looked at the last couple of weeks. Wisdom seeks to gain and apply them. So can a person be knowledgeable without and not wise? Yes. Now you have to ask yourself the question, Christian, this morning, well, what is the source of this wisdom? What is the source of our wisdom? Well, that's an easy question to answer probably, but look with me in 1 Corinthians chapter 1. 
Some of this, if you think with me just for a minute here, you may be asked this question by somebody. You may be asked. So you may know the answers to a lot of the questions this morning, but let me challenge you in this area. Sometimes you don't just keep it to yourself. Somebody's going to ask you about it, about your belief in God, and about perhaps wisdom and knowledge. What is the source of this wisdom? In 1 Corinthians chapter 1, if you look with me here, 1 Corinthians chapter 1, reading in verse number uh, 17, I'd ask you to follow along very carefully here. You already know the answer to this question, I'm sure, but perhaps you don't. You'll find it in the scriptures here in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 17. For Christ, speaking of Paul here, sent me not to baptize, but to preach the gospel. Not with wisdom of words, lest the cross of Christ should be made of none effect. For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness. But to us which are saved, it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise, and will bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent. Where is the wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the disputer of this world? Hath not God made foolish the wisdom of this world? For after that, in the wisdom of God, the world by wisdom knew not God. It pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. For the Jews require a sign, and they're still looking today. The Greeks seek after wisdom, and they're still seeking after wisdom. But we preach Christ crucified unto the Jews a stumbling block, and unto the Greeks foolishness. But unto them which are called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God, look here, and the wisdom of God. Because the foolishness of God is wiser than men, the weakness of God is stronger than men. For you see your calling, brethren, how that not many wise men after the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble are called. But God has chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. And God has chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things which are mighty. And base things of the world and things which are despised hath God chosen, yea, and things which are not, to bring to naught things that are. Why? That no flesh should glory in his presence. But of him are ye in Christ Jesus, who of God has made unto us wisdom and righteousness and sanctification and redemption, that according as it is written, he that glorieth, let him glory in the Lord. The source of this wisdom, quite simply, is the Lord Jesus Christ. Look at me in the book of Colossians, chapter 2, if you would, please. You're lacking wisdom in your life this morning. I trust the lesson will be a blessing to you. I can have knowledge of a lot of things. Amen? But having wisdom is really where it's at. The book of Colossians, if you would look with me in Colossians chapter 2. Colossians chapter 2, reading verse number 1. For I would that ye knew what great conflict I have for you and for them at Laodicea. For as many as have seen my face in the flesh, have not seen my face in the flesh, that their hearts might be comforted, being knit together in love, and unto all riches of the full assurance of understanding, to acknowledgement of the mystery of God and of the Father and of Christ, in whom are hid all the treasures, look here, of wisdom and knowledge. Again, what's the source of this wisdom? Jesus Christ. Well, how do I tap into that? How do I tap? I need wisdom. Listen, let's think for just for a minute here. Those of you rearing children, oh, come now. Wisdom, amen. Husbands and wives, and just learning to, to work together as a team, amen, in rearing the children in the husband and wife relationship. I need wisdom and discernment out in the working world, amen. How do I deal with the lost? How do I deal with, with the trials and tribulations of life? I need God's wisdom. I, do you get tired of, maybe you don't, but I get tired of looking to myself and finding after a while that self fails you far too often. About the time I think I have it figured out, uh, that's not, not the best idea or not the best solution to things. God would have us to go to him for, as our chief source of wisdom. So if you're lacking wisdom in your life, well, how, how do I tap into it? How do I tap into God's wisdom? Now think of this, this is an inexhaustible supply. It's available 24 seven. And God's not a respecter of persons. Well, how do I tap into this? Do you know a lot of times with our Heavenly Father we have not because we simply ask not? Come on, we have not because we ask not. If you look with me in the book of James chapter one, book of James chapter one, maybe you're challenged in an area of, of uh, Lord, what, what, what would you have me to do in the ministry? 
Or, Lord, what would you have me to do in the area of work? Uh, Lord, what, what do you want me to do? What, what is the purpose of my life, Lord? I know I'm saved, but, Lord, I don't seem to have any real direction sometimes. I just seem like I'm walking around, wandering around in the wilderness without any real focus in my life. Well, listen, God can focus you. God can give you the discernment. God can give you the direction. God can adjust that compass of your life to the direction he wants you to go. He can order your steps. Book of James chapter 1, verse 5. Look at carefully at this verse. If, Paul's very diplomatic. If any of you lack wisdom, Sorry, James, if any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God that give it to all men liberally and abradeth not and it shall be given him. If, of course we lack wisdom, but if any of you lack wisdom, look what it says here, let him ask of God. Rather than struggling with life and trying to figure out things on your own, you don't have to. That's the beauty of being saved. Man's pride will oftentimes, men especially, amen, we're gonna figure out ourselves. And then at the last minute, pick up the book of instructions and try to get some help. Amen? Come on now. You don't have to do that in life. Yes. Ask God. If any of, man, if any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God. Lord, what would you have me to do? I've been at Trinity since 1984, okay? Many times I've asked the Lord, is it time to move? Is it time for a change? Is it time to shift gears? Lord, what would you have us to do as a family? Okay? That can get to be a challenge sometimes. Lord, what would you have us to do in the ministry? Lord, what would you have us to do work-wise? Geographical. Lord, where would you have us to be and what would you have us to do? If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God. And what I like about this verse, it says, that give it to all men, not a respect to a person, liberally. It's not just a small dose when you ask God. Ask like you're expecting a truckload, amen? And he'll bless you with it. If you're just asking for just a little teaspoon, well, he'll probably do that because God is good. But ask for the whole load, Lord, and then help me to deal with it. You lack wisdom this morning? Ask God for it. You have not because you simply ask not. Sometimes I'm simply too proud to ask. Sometimes I think I've got all the answers. I've got it all, oh, I've been saved since the early 80s. Well, I've got it all figured out, do I? <laughs> do you, amen? Yeah, life is a challenge, isn't it? And then it's over, yep. So what, if, what are you doing with the time God's given you? Ev evidence of real wisdom in your life is how we, how we use time, amen? We're to redeem it. God asks us to teach us, to number our days. Why? That we may apply our hearts unto what? Wisdom. If you're young here this morning, it goes fast. Amen. If you're getting older, you're seeing that window closing quick and you're hanging on a little bit to the past. Okay? Yeah. But God help me to have the wisdom in this chapter of our life of what to do. Amen. With each day. If you lack wisdom or ask God. Look with me in 1 Kings chapter 3. If you were, God had given you a, or God has given you a question of ask anything of me, and I'll bless you with it. Think to yourself this morning, what would you ask for? Now, listen, don't try to be spiritual, okay? <laughs> okay, well, I'd ask just what Solomon asked for. Oh, nonsense, amen? A million dollars would be nice, Lord. Not ones, amen? Hundreds would be preferred. Okay, or, or this or that. Come on, what's the first thing that comes to mind? Amen. If God were to give you that question this morning, and I, seriously, what would you ask for? What's the first thing that comes to mind? It might be good health. Amen. It might be uh, a better job. It might be um, uh, uh, this or that. But it's interesting in Solomon's response here. In 1 Kings chapter 3, in verse number five, it says, In Gibeon, the Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream by night, and God said, Ask what I shall give thee. And Solomon said, Thou hast showed unto thy servant David my father great mercy, according as he walked before thee in truth 
and in righteousness and uprightness of heart with thee. And thou hast kept for him this great kindness. Thou hast given him a son to sit on his throne as it is this day. Solomon had a grateful heart. He appreciated his dad. He appreciated what God had done for his father. Amen? Now think with me here. He appreciates the position God has blessed him with. I believe Solomon had a spirit of humility. He understood who he was serving. And now, O Lord my God, thou hast made thy servant king instead of David my father. And I am but a little child, I know not how to go out or come in. And thy servant is in the midst of thy people which thou hast chosen, a great people that cannot be numbered nor counted for multitude. Give therefore thy servant, look carefully at verse 9, an understanding heart to judge thy people that I may discern, look here, between good and bad, for who is able to judge this by so great a people? And the speech pleased the Lord, as Solomon asked this thing. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God. God asked Solomon, hey, ask, what would you like? I'm going to bless you with it. And Solomon asked in verse 9, give therefore thy servant an understanding heart. I want you to think about this request that he's made, how God answered it. And I want you to take the time this week and go back and look at, did Solomon stick with it? Did Solomon stick with it? Now God, look at his request. Now look at the end of Solomon's life. Something changed somewhere, and it wasn't God. Amen? Something changed somewhere. And that's another lesson for another day. God says in verse number 11, And God said unto him, Because thou hast asked this thing, and hast not asked for thyself long life, neither hast asked riches for thyself, nor hast asked for the life of thine enemies, but hast asked for thyself understanding to discern judgment. Behold, I have done according to thy words. Lo, I have given thee a wise and an understanding heart, so that there was none like thee before thee, neither after thee shall any arise like unto thee. And I have also given thee that which thou hast not asked, both riches and honor, so that there shall not be any among the kings like unto thee all thy days. And if thou wilt walk in my ways to keep my statutes and my commandments as thy father David did walk, then I will lengthen thy days. Wow. I don't think I would have asked for, for wisdom. I don't think so. I just don't. I, 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 you wish you, I, you know, I was in this position and I, God would ask me, he'd hope you'd ask for this, but did you find it's interesting that the psalm had a spirit of humility he loved God. He appreciated what his dad had done. Amen. And he asked for discernment so that he could judge this side people. Amen. To discern between bad, good and bad. Amen. What, a, what an amazing request. And if you study the end life of Solomon, things shifted. And just to give you a hint, just to give you a hint, <clears throat> you may think, well, Brother Douglas, listen, this is how we are. I can ask for wisdom today, and God bless me with it. Amen? And then I kind of just drift off and forget sometimes. God wants us to stick with things. Verse 1 of chapter 3, you're, you're still in chapter 3. I'd like to show you where probably some of the problems started with Solomon. In verse 1 of chapter 3, had Solomon made affinity with Pharaoh, oops, king of Egypt, and not only that, he took Pharaoh's daughter and brought her into the city of David till he had made an end of building his own house, the house of the Lord and the wall of Jerusalem round about. You know, things start out little. Amen? You got to be careful. You might start off with that verse and go from there. Also multiplied unto himself horses and silver and gold and a lot of wives. And the warning given in Deuteronomy 17 was not to do that, specifically to kings, amen? And Solomon did it anyway. The problem we get into sometimes is God blesses us way above and beyond our imagination. And sometimes we forget the God of the blessing. And we forget it's God who gives us power, it's God who gives us wealth, it's God who gives us wisdom, and Solomon forgot. 
But what an amazing request here. The obtaining of this wisdom, how do we tap into it? Ask God. Look with me in the book of, of Proverbs chapter, chapter 1. You lack wisdom in your life this morning? I think each of us, if we were honest with ourselves, yeah. You could look back at your life, maybe the last year, maybe the last two years, maybe the last six months. Well, how you doing? Huh? How you doing? How's life going for you? How's your service to the Lord? In Proverbs chapter 1, look at me in Proverbs chapter 1. This hasn't changed. Proverbs 1 verse 7. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fool to spies wisdom and instruction. The fear of the Lord is still where it starts. It's, it's, it's still there. It, it, it's between you and your heavenly father. It's, how, what do you think about God this morning, Christian? It's the fear of the Lord is still the beginning here. It still hasn't changed. And if you look with me in Proverbs chapter 2, and then there's, there's this, we're speaking about wisdom this morning, but there's this pursuit of God. There's a pursuit of the knowledge of God and the things of God. Look with me in Proverbs chapter 2 here. Ask God for wisdom. Get into the word of God. The reading and understanding of God's word is still primary concern to us. It should be. But look with me in Proverbs chapter 2 here, and I ask you to follow along very carefully. My son, if thou wilt receive my words and hide my commandments with thee, so that thou incline thine ear unto wisdom and apply thine heart to understanding, yea, if thou criest after knowledge and lifted up thy voice for understanding, if thou searchest her as silver, if thou seekest her as silver and searchest for her as for treasures, then shalt thou understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. For the Lord giveth wisdom, out of his mouth cometh knowledge and understanding. He layeth up sound wisdom for the righteous. He is a buckler to them that walk uprightly. He keepeth the paths of judgment and preserveth the way of his saints. Then shalt thou understand righteousness and judgment and equity in every good path. When wisdom entereth into thine heart and knowledge is pleasant unto thy soul, discretion shall preserve thee. Understanding shall keep thee to deliver thee from the way of the evil man. You'll go on further down here in verse 16, to deliver thee from the strange woman. And verse number 20, that thou mayest walk in the way of good men. If then, if then. Well, Brother Doug, I've heard this before. And I've tried it. It hasn't worked. I challenge you to keep after it. You lack wisdom this morning? Ask God. I don't have all the answers. I don't think any of us here this morning can honestly say, I have all the answers to life's problems. Ask God if you're lacking wisdom. Get into the word of God. I've read Proverbs before. Read Proverbs 2 like you really mean it. Amen? If you'll do this, then God will do these things. It's an amazing study. It'll keep you from, look here, shall preserve thee, to deliver thee from the way of the evil man, to deliver thee from the strange woman, and again, that thou mayest walk in the way of good men and keep the paths of the righteous. If then. How do you tap into this source of wisdom? Ask God. Get into the word of God. You know, in some ways, folks, it's, it's like it's so elementary, I don't even, I can't explain it. It's, it sits right in front of us every day, the word of God. It's on a coffee table. It's on your desk or bookshelf at home. It sits right there every day, right in front of us or around us. It's not going to jump off the coffee table into our hearts, amen? It's not going to migrate its way there. God asks his children to study to show thyself approved unto God a workman, that he is not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. God wants us in his word. If I want, a better, if I want more knowledge and understanding of my heavenly father, I need to go to the source of that. Amen? Yeah. And then ask God to help me to make wise application with what I've learned. Not just to be a hearer, but a doer. Another thought here. In asking for wisdom and searching the scriptures, asking God for wisdom and searching the scriptures, there's two key disciplines that are foundational to the acquisition of wisdom. And they're mentioned, if you've been in the book at all, hearing and doing. Look with me, if you would please, in the book of Ezekiel chapter 33. The book of Ezekiel chapter 33. Ezekiel chapter 33.
Find your place in Ezekiel chapter 33. Look with me in verse number 30. Also thou son of man, the children of thy people still are talking against thee by the walls and in the doors of the houses and speak one to another, every one to his brother saying, come I pray you and hear what is the word that cometh forth from the Lord. And they come unto thee as the people cometh and they sit before thee as my people. And the, now look carefully here. And they hear thy words, but they will not do them. For with their mouth they show much love but their heart goeth after their covetousness. And lo, thou art unto them as a very lovely song of one that hath a pleasant voice and can play well on, instrument, on an instrument, for they hear thy words, but they do them not. There's two keys in this matter of obtaining wisdom, hearing and doing. And when this cometh to pass, lo, it will come, then shall they know that a prophet hath been among them. Look with me also, if you would please, in the book of Matthew, chapter 7. You're going to find in these lessons, as we look into this matter of searching for wisdom and walking in wisdom, and, and you have to ask yourself the question this morning, uh, man, you can hear this lesson. You can leave here this morning knowing, wow, let's see now, I, I think I lack wisdom. But, but what was said about finding it? Oh, ask God. I can see, I can know this. I can know that's the right thing to do. I can leave here today knowing this matter of acquiring wisdom. God is the source of it. Amen. And I'm to ask. But see, wisdom applies it. We, we, we don't just hear. We ask God for help in the doing part of it. Because you're going to find here in Matthew chapter 7, verse 24. If you look with me in Matthew 7, 24, it says, Therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine... Uh, oh, and doeth them, I will liken him unto a wise man which built his house upon a rock. The rain descended, the floods came, and the winds blew and beat upon that house, and it fell not, for it was founded upon a rock. Everyone that heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them, not shall be likened unto a foolish man which built his house upon the sand. The rain descended, the floods came, and the winds blew and beat upon that house, and it fell, and great was the fall of it. Yeah, the problem, the problem with myself, and perhaps you can relate to this, it's the hearing. You're here this morning, you're hearing a Bible lesson. Now, whether it's brought to your satisfaction or not, God holds us accountable for the scriptures. God holds us accountable for, well, what do we know we should be doing? Uh, well, if any of you lack wisdom, let them ask of God. So you leave here today, or this Sunday, and you start your week out. Here's my challenge to you. I know there's an area in your life that you need God's wisdom. There's an area in my life that's challenging me right now drastically. I need God's wisdom in. Now, I can make, make a choice come Monday morning or Sunday night. Well, Lord, I'm going to try it on my own again. Amen. One more time, bang my head against the wall. I hope that's not the case. I hope you take this lesson in this matter of renewing of the mind, renewing of self, the change in his image as part of this process is God's wisdom plays a huge part in it. And if you lack it, be honest with yourself, you should know from the lesson this morning, ask God. Get into the word of God. And then when you're asking God and getting into the word of God, this hearing and doing starts to play a big factor. Hearing and doing are huge, are huge factors in this. Because you're going to find in the book of James chapter 1, go, go with me to the book of James chapter 1, and we're done here, James chapter 1. James chapter 1 in closing. James chapter 1, verse 22. We're going to read in verse 19. Wherefore, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear. James 1, 19, slow to speak, slow to wrath. For the wrath of man worketh not the righteousness of God. Wherefore, lay apart all filthiness and superfluity and naughtiness, and receive with meekness the engrafted word, which is able to save your souls. But be ye doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. For any be a hearer of the word, and not a doer, he is like unto a man beholding his natural face in a glass. For he beholdeth himself, and goeth his way, and straightway forgetteth what manner of man he was. But whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty and continueth therein, he being not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of, this, of the work, this man shall be blessed in his deed. 